So good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our session, Applied Open Design to Modern HTML and CSS. <laughs> I'm Christy Loy, and I'm a front-end developer working on Patternfly, and I specialize in CSS. And hey, I'm Jen Giardino. I'm the accessibility lead for Patternfly. So this is the second of four sessions that focus on the different as aspects of Patternfly, design, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and accessibility. Our session will focus on how you can modify our design system for your own projects by understanding how, do you, um, how we use the standards we use to develop modular components and layouts. With this knowledge, we'll practice overriding and extending variables to achieve open designs. After this presentation, we'll be running through a workshop on Catacoda, where you'll be able to apply the knowledge that you've learned in this session. So we really encourage anyone that has a laptop in the audience to follow along, whether you want to or not, up to you. <laughs> so Patternfly is Red Hat's open source design system, created to enable consistency and usability across a wide range of applications and use cases. We have teams of designers, CSS developers, React developers, as well as open source contributors all working together. Patternfly was created to efficiently build screens like these. With Red Hat having over 50 different products, it would be impossible to create consistency across every screen without a design system. Any developer across the globe can take our components and layouts to build screens like these in no time. So here I've broken down a um, typical Patternfly UI screen um, into different components. So there's a nav, a toolbar, a table, a card, content, drop down, and an avatar component. Um, let's take a quick look at components, layouts, and demos. So here are some examples of components. Components are reusable, independent structures that are designed to fill their parent um, and don't have margins because of their modularity. They can be used in other components to enhance functionality, and they can be used with other components to create demos. So let's move on to layouts. Um, here's an example of a grid layout and a stack layout. Layouts are the containers that allow for organizing and grouping elements. They allow components to remain modular as they handle the styles necessary to position them in different contexts. Layout styles should never be part of a component. And finally, demos. Um, so here's a form demo and a data list page demo. Demos show how components and layouts specifically can be put together to build more complex structures. If additional styling is necessary to implement a demo, you can use utility classes, um, which we'll get to later. So now I'll pass it over to Jen. Hey, so one of the ways that we've been able to make Patternfly as modular and flexible as it is, is by using the BEM naming system. BEM stands for Block Element Modifier. It's a methodology that provides a naming convention based on the concept that a UI can be broken down into individual blocks, and that within those blocks you would have elements that create that block, and that you could have different variations of a block that you might need to um, display, so you can modify that block to have different appearances in scale or color or, um, or state. So pattern fly does not follow BEM strictly. It borrows some aspects of BEM, and I'll show you here in the examples of the class names that we have. So if you look at the class names on the left, these are examples of class names that we use for components and layouts. So all of our class names start with a PF. Um, this is so that when you're looking at the classes in your application, it's easy for you, you to identify which classes come from Patternfly. And then the component class names start after the PF have a dash C so that you can easily identify which class names belong to components. And then the very first HTML element for a component is the block. So the block name is usually the same as the component name. So in this case, I have an example of pf-c-alert for our alert component. That's the first class that gets assigned to that component HTML. And then within that component, we have other elements. So the way we name those class names is very similar to the block class name, where we start with a pf, and then we have a dash c, and then we have the same name that we use for the block so that you know that this element belongs to that component. And then after the block name, we have two underscores to separate the block name from the element name, and then we name that element. So the example I have here is pf-c-alert underscore underscore title for a title that you would see within an alert component. 
Our layout classes follow a very similar naming convention. The only difference is that we use an L to identify those class names as layout classes. Um, and then the examples on the right is where we start to break away from the BEM methodology. The modifiers, um, if you are familiar with BEM, the modifier classes usually also identify the block or block element that those modifier classes are used for. But when we um, started off working on the HTML and CSS for Patentfly, we decided that would add a lot of complexity to our system. So we decided to drop the block and element from the class names and just use the, the modifier. So all of our modifier class names start with a PF followed by a dash M so that you know that it's a modifier class. And then the, the name of the modifier, the thing that it changes. So in this case, I have PF-M-Danger that we would use in the alert component to change how that alert component displays so that it can display as a danger alert. When we define, when we create our components, the modifiers that we create for them um, are specific to HTML elements in that component. So you have to use them as we document in our um, design system. Utilities, on the other hand, are classes that you can apply to any element in your application. These are more like helper classes. So if the default styles that we provide for our components in Patternfly aren't exactly what you need for your UI, then you can apply a utility class class to slightly tweak how something looks. So in this example, um, our pattern fly utility classes, they, they start with pf-u, and then we name the property that you're modifying, and then we name the value that you're, you're using when you use this utility class. So the pf-u-p-lg, that's applying a large padding to an element in your application. So now I'm going to take you through an example of a component in Patternfly so you can see how these class names are being used in the HTML. The example on the left shows two examples of the alert component, and then the HTML on the right is the HTML um, for that example on the left. So you can see um, that block class name is pf-c-alert. It's applied to the first HTML element for that component, and it's the entire, entire component. And then um, the modifier class is also defined on that parent element for this component. It will vary where the modifier classes are used in components. And in this example, it just happens to also be on the, the first HTML element. These modifiers are changing what colors are used for the icon, um, the icon background, and then also the, the title color. And then you can see these alert examples are slightly different. They have different elements that make up that entire block. So the first example has an icon and a title, and then it has an action on the far right. And then the second example also has an icon and a title, but instead of an action, it has a description. And you can see how those class names are defined in the HTML for those components. As Christy mentioned, components can be nested inside of other components. So this is another component that we have in Patternfly. It's called the alert group. So something to note about this class name is that some of our block names are made up of more than one word. So we separate those words with a dash. So the block in this case is alert group. And that is the container that wraps the elements within the alert group. And the elements in the alert group are list items, and we name those alert group items. And then you can see in this example, inside each list item that has the alert group item class name, that's where we then nest the alert components. So the alert group is basically just controlling the spacing between the list items within the alert group, and then the alert component is that block, that individual alert that has the icon and the title and other elements within that block. So now I'm going to take you through an example of a component that um, uses pattern fly variables. Um, 
units. So variables are how we define the values that are used in a CSS rule set. So in this example, you can see the same class name that I was showing in the previous slides is for the alert title. And in this rule set, we want to define the value for font size. We set that, um, that property to a component variable. The component variable name includes the block and element that it's being used for, and then also the CSS property um, for which it's providing a value. And component variables are scoped to a component. And within that component, um, that same component CSS file where you saw the, the rule set, we map all of the component variables to global variables. So in this example, you see the same component variable that I shared on the previous slide. And now it's being mapped to one of our global variables that we have defined. The global variables are how we provide consistency across our design system. And their names are described the property and then the value that that variable provides. So in this case, we're using the medium font size for our alert title font size. And then this is illustrating how we actually assign a value to our global variables. So first we map global variable CSS properties to SAS variables, and then the SAS variable is where we actually give the value that we want to use. One of the, the the like key things with our global variables is that if someone wanted to use pattern fly and didn't want to use the default styles that we had allocated to these global variables, it would be really easy for someone to just go through and change basic things. Like if you wanted something that's a little more compact, you can go in and, and make those sizings a little bit smaller. If you wanted different color values, you could go through and change the colors that are used. So now we're going to take you through one of our um, training modules so you can see how you can take an existing pattern fly component and extend it um, using pattern fly variables. Great. Thanks, Jen. Um, so, so now I need to mirror. Sorry. It's going to take me some time to mirror the display um, so that I can yep. follow along with what Christy is taking you through. But if you want to follow us along, um, here's the URL to our main website for the, the training modules. Yeah, we'd really encourage you to, if you can. Um, so it's catacoda.com forward slash patternfly. And Cabin Coda is an open source training platform that we're currently using to host a lot of our patternfly um, trainings. Um, and actually, outside in the booth, where we have um, a station set up where we're testing a lot of these scenarios. So if you enjoy this session or want to learn more, definitely check that out. Could I get a hands up of people that are going to follow along? Oh, great. OK. Awesome. Okay, so you guys should see this screen now. Um, and then when you get here, you want to click on the left box, um, which is for the HTML and CSS scenarios, and just click Start Course. I think it's a bit slow. Okay, so here you see we have five different training modules, um, and these are all outside in the booth, or you can access these whenever you want. Um, and today we're going to go over overriding and extending variables. So click on that. Awesome, and so now you should see this page here. Um, when you get here, click Start Scenario. Is, is the font size large enough for the people in the audience? Font size is good. Do you want to click Start Scenario? Oh, sorry. That's okay. Okay, so the setup here is on the left panel, there's content and then different pieces of code that you'll copy. Um, in the right-hand corner is your editor, where you see the files that we're going to be editing. And then at the bottom panel here is the iframe, which will render in the background the code we're adding. So, so the first step is to add code to the workspace. Oh, and feel free to raise your hands if you have any questions. We want to make this an open conversation. So, oh, sorry. So before, I want to copy it? 
Let's go. Um, so before we get started, we're going to add some code to the workspace that we can modify. Um, the step, first step is to copy code into your index.html file. Um, and you'll want to click the copy to editor button below to add HTML um, to the index file. So you can see Jen just clicked that button, and now our code's up there. Um, and then scroll down in your content panel. Um, and so then for step two, we're going to set up the new styles that we're going to be overriding. Um, so uh, there are two blocks in this file. One is the root, which targets styles across the entire application. And then one is the um, PFC card block, which targets styles specific to the card component. So click again, click the copy to editor button um, below to add code for the card component to the myapp.scss file. And when the server reloads, you should see a card in your iframe. Does everyone see that? Any trouble? OK, great. So for step two, we're going to override pattern fly variables to achieve a new theme. Um, so now that we've add, we have the card on our page, we're going to customize the styles applied to it. First, we're going to add a new column variable to use inside the card. Um, we're going to make the, the links in the card purple. In Patternfly, all of the CSS values we use are first assigned to variables. We recommend doing the same when making customizations in your application. So navigate to your My App file in the editor, um, and inside of the root block, make a new variable name called My App Card Theme Color and assign it to be the hex color for purple. So you can see Jen's just grabbed that line of code there and pasted it inside of the root block. This is because this is a global variable that we've just created. Um, awesome. So second, we're going to override the global link color. So in our current example of the card, the buttons in the footer use this global link color. Um, and we can reassign the global link color variable to use our new custom color variable so that all the properties that use the global link color variable in the card um, will now use this color. So inside of your card block within the My App file, set the global variable um, to use the new value defined as the custom variable. So Jen's just grabbed that, that uh, piece of code underneath hint, and she's um, scoped that to the card component. This is because we're overriding the global link color specifically for the card. If we had the global link color at the root, we'd be modifying all of the link colors across the entire application, which we don't want. Is everyone good at this stage? Okay, so the third step is to change the font size of the title in the card header. Not all changes require custom CSS. Many components include modifier classes that enable you to customize the appearance um, of a component. So for this update, we're going to use a modifier class available for the title component. So go back to your index file. And you can actually command or control F in that editor window um, to search for a piece of a string of text or a string of code. So Jen's just typing in PFC title space PFM medium. You could also copy, there's a, P, a line of code there which you can copy and search for. But yeah, so you should see that string of text highlighted now. And the idea is that we're changing the modifier cl um, class associated with the title from medium to extra large. And then, yeah, if it doesn't reload, you might just have to add a space. Sometimes we have trouble with the reloading. Or you can right click in the iframe here. Does that work? Or maybe add a space after PFM XL. I can't tell. Yeah, I think that changed. Sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah. So this is so f some of the so for classes like Jen was mentioning earlier, we have modifier classes that are associated with those classes. So for like title, for example, there's a modifier class from extra small to to XL. And when the browser reloads, hopefully you will see a card like this. Okay. Great. Move on. So for step three, we're going to extend a pattern flag co component to achieve a new design. So now that we've practiced overriding variables, let's practice extending pattern fly system to create a new element in the card. Um, first, we're going to add a separator element. So we need to um, add the HTML markup. So in your index file, we're going to add the HTML markup for the separator element. And it's going to be a sibling to the card body. So that means we want it to sit inside of the card header and the card body, as well as the card body and the card footer. So when you're copying in this um, block of code for the separator, um, make sure that you put it inside of, or after the header tag and, um, and before the body tag, and then after the body tag, and then before the footer tag. 
So then, yeah. Do you want to maybe just highlight where you've added the separators in? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And so the class name that we've given this separator starts with my app, just as an easy way to differentiate between PF or is it or, and the new app that you're creating. So once that HTML markup is added in there, we need, now need to add the variables associated to this class so that we can style the separator. Um, so the first variable we're going to add is for height, and it's going to use Patternfly's global variable for small border width, um, and it should go under the variable declarations inside of the card block. So Jen is going to grab that. She's going to add a new line in the card block, and then she's copied and pasted the, the variable um, for the height for the separator. And again, these are scoped to the card block because the card has the separator element inside of it. Great, so the next variable we want to add is for background color. So Jen's copying that line of code there, and then she's going to paste it inside of the card. And you can also see the naming techniques that we've used that Jen mentioned in the slides before. And the third variable we're going to use in the card is um, for a margin. So copy that line and then paste it into the card block too. And nothing should happen in your iframe right now because we haven't um, set the variables yet. We've only declared them. So for step five, we're going to assign the variables for the separator element. Um, cool. So we want to add this as a new block under the card block. So basically, when you declare the variables, they're not actually set to the properties that are going to be in the separator element. And if you grab that, that um, block of code and paste it under there, you'll see we have a property for background color, and that's set to the background color variable. Same thing for height. And then for the margin, we wanted it on the right, the bottom, and the left, not on the top. So we've repeated that margin variable three times so that we could add it to those three properties. And hopefully when you reload your browser, you should see the card appear like that with the separator elements. Great. Okay, so now for step four, we're going to add a pattern fly class for the layout. Um, so now that we've updated the card design, we're going to add several cards and then use a gallery layout and organize them using a gutter. Um, so we've kind of done the work for you. If you click the copy to edit a button for that code block, it'll now um, copy and paste four different cards in your index file. So Jen's just scrolling through there. Um, and so layout classes in pattern fly are super easy to use. It's just like... <laughs> one or two steps of copying and pasting and then being able to add a layout. So in this case, scroll down in the content side and we're going to go to step two. Really slow. And so what we want to do, so sometimes when you add layout classes, you'll add them to the component. Other times you'll create a wrapper around the component and then you'll add, add the layout inside of that. So for, in this case, since we have all these cards, we want to create a wrapper around the cards where we could add our layout. So Jen's just adding an opening div tag to the top. And then to the very bottom of the file, she's adding a closing div tag. So now that we have this parent wrapper that's um, around the cards, we can add classes to it that have styles um, paired to it. So Jen's typing in, you can also see this on the content, you can copy and paste um, div class equals PFL gallery, which is one of our gallery layouts. And so when that reloads, you should see the cards lined up like this. The gallery layout uses um, grid styles, and then it uses grid columns to, I think it's 250 picks, uh, uh, some amount that um, gives more of a width. And then, a lot, like our components, layout classes also have modifier classes that are, um, that are used with them. So for example, the gallery class has a gutter modifier that you can use with the gallery to create spaces in between the cards. Yeah, yeah, it's probably really faint, but um, there should be spaces in between the cards there. And if you scroll down, there should be, yeah, space. Uh, I can't really see. <laughs> Hopefully you can see on your, your browser, but um, space on the top and between the cards. 
And so that is the end of our workshop. Um, but as we said, we have four other ones that we're testing out right now. So if you want to learn more about Pattern Fly, um, then yeah, definitely check out the booth outside. And I think that's all. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah. Thanks for your talk. Thank you. Um, very nice. Uh, I had a question about the structure of the HTML. There's like I see a lot of divs. I was wondering why not? Why is a card not an article, for example? Why is a card not an article instead of a div? Like semantically speaking, the layout seems rather like it has a lot of divs. Wouldn't affect my styling. It would just work exactly the same if I if I pick an article. Okay. Cool. Cool. Thank you. Even building on that for like the nav component, we have an example on our website where we're, it's using the nav HTML markup and then it's also using devs so that whichever context you need it in, you can grab it. Well, if that's all, then we'll wrap it up. But thank you everyone for listening to us.